she's a creative mind with a background not in design but in computer science. And uh, he combined his knowledge of coding and also his hobby of games and playing. Um, and he started making uh, pop-up escape rooms for his family and for uh, birthday parties. And that was a great success. So he actually uh, now has his own startup that's called Escape Event in which he uh, translates the idea of a pop-up escape room for big company events. And they created already several large uh, personalized escape rooms for ING, Rijkswaterstaat, KPN and TU Delft. And uh, today he will tell us more about uh, a big event they did for Rijkswaterstaat. So Jan Willem, please uh, come to the stage. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the brief introduction, uh, Anna. Um, I'm Jan Willem Maneschijn and uh, we design uh, large-scale escape rooms. And today I'm going to tell you about an e event, our latest event, uh, an escape room, which you are going to fight the flood. And it's interesting because the client has huge um, requirements for this escape room. And I want to talk to you today about how we deal uh, how we dealt with those requirements and how we made sure we could um, satisfy the client and create a game in which uh, the players will play in one hour. So they came to me and asked, okay, can you create an escape room for the upper management policy makers of government agencies in the construction area um, which deal with enormous complex public building projects like building bridges or making new highways or redesigning uh, whole new neighborhoods? So these kind of people, a really tough audience. <laughs> um, and they asked me to inspire them, create behavioral change, freedom of their standard thoughts, create something uh, immersive, which would show them how to take new opportunities and make sure uh, they translate risk into opportunities and, and innovate and do all, all that kind of stuff. And it's interesting, all those companies have one well, main challenge, making sure they're ready for the Paris Agreement. Um, and they asked, well, they should have act, uh, acted yesterday, um, so show it to them, make sure they know they have to invest in sustainable solutions, um, make sure you stimulate this collaboration between those companies and challenge them on their knowledge and on their collaboration. Um, and it, it's just a few of the huge list of requirements they sent me, which should be put in this game. Um, so I was like, okay. <laughs> Should we do this? Do we have the time to do this? And, and if so, how can we make sure that the client will be satisfied with our work while, while we all know this is not possible to uh, incorporate all those ideas into one, ga uh, one hour game? Um, so yes, we said we, we can do this. We, and I'm gonna try and take you with us through our design process. Uh, uh, how, how did we do it? But first I wanna show you the result. Um, you can see over here the whole group of people playing with uh, nice uh, colored uh, shirts on, um, which removed all status, really interesting. Um, starting in groups of five, making plans, and then in phase two, getting the hands dirty with big, huge uh, groups that col collaborate, which resulted in chaos, of course. Um, and they had to make sure they were fighting the flood. So our approach is pretty well rather basic. I mean, I'm a computer scientist, I don't know anything about designing, so I tried to f yeah, get a team around me who did know about designing. Um, and what we basically did was those four things. So getting input from the client, making sure we know what their goals are, but also making sure um, that we know what they know. I mean, I don't know anything about building and construction and public tenders and whatever, um, but we had to create puzzles which incorporated those ideas. And then we created structures. We ne needed for ourselves to make sure that we knew what was part of a game, what would be sub uh, subtilities in the game, and what wouldn't be part of the game. I mean, you have to choose, obviously. Um, and from that, we tried to create. We tried to design puzzles. We tried to create and produce all the, the puzzles. Um, and we do that with fast paper prototyping. We try to iterate a lot and try and make sure we use our inspiration and test it 
really fast. So at the second brainstorm with my team, who some of them never created puzzles, we had a lot of inspiration, a lot of ideas, and I just said, okay, you now all have 15 minutes, you have to create a puzzle right now. In those 15 minutes, after those 15 minutes, we are going to play each other's puzzles and see what, what happened. And then we are going to test, test a lot, test to your target audience, because um, they're really different thinkers than I and our team are. Um, it's really important that you test the difficulty of your puzzles because if you create a puzzle, you can't unsee the solution of the puzzle. So you will never be able to solve your own puzzle. So you continuously have to try and test all the puzzles with different parties. And that's why we iterate a lot. And the iteration um, is not only done with the client, so we don't test with the client and get input from them, but we also test internally. And that makes sure we can iterate a lot. So we do sometimes do iterations twice a day with our team. So one half is going to create that, those puzzles, the other half is creating other puzzles, and you're gonna try and solve each other's puzzles, and thus creating a continuous loop of improvement and testing. Um, but we discovered that we did too much internal loops and too less external loops. Um, we fell in love with our end game. We created an end game, we designed it, it was really beautiful, and it looks like this. So it's a fake city, Waterdam, we call it, not Rotterdam, but Waterdam, um, and it has a lot of interaction. You could place dunes on it, you could move, you could move the houses to migrate people, you could uh, install new delta werken, not, I'm not sure what the English word is. Um, you could uh, you know, well do a lot of stuff, but it was too much. And we even automated everything. So <laughs> you could see the water flooding and it's getting higher and higher and you should put a dune on it so it gets even higher, but it still floods and everything you could do on there was interactive and automated, and, but it was too complex. I mean, do you see what's happening here? Do you see, oh, next. Do you see what's happening here? This was our external test five days before the final event. Where is this board? <laughs> Nobody is paying attention. It was way too small, way too complex, um, and it didn't br yeah, bring the attention to itself. So my team sat me down, because it was my little baby. I, I love the idea of the board. And I said, well, it didn't work. <laughs> it sucked. <laughs> and I thought, oh, geez, with five days, including the weekend, are we going to change or not? Well, we did change. Um, we started our rapid prototyping again. We got ideas within 15 minutes. Okay, what should we do else? What is the goal of this game? How can we make sure people are, we know people are fighting the water? Can we create a water meter? S it's somehow, we don't know how, but that was, was one of the ideas and we continue to, how can we do it? If we make it ourselves from the root, it's gonna be ugly again, like, like our uh, first uh, tryout was. Um, it's got not gonna be nice, so how can we create something within those five days without creating it fully ourselves? So we found a modular uh, clothing closet and we created a tower from it. And during this weekend and the days after and the nights after we soldered everything inside of it, all those LEDs, all the different kind of electronic parts, it was long, long nights, hoping that would be done. Um, and it worked. The towers are standing tall, five throughout the whole game. And um, we saw that people were actively engaging the towers. Every time they solve the puzzle, the tower level would go two down. So they would immediately know, okay, I'm still safe, I'm not over under the water. And people were trying, uh, trying to solve the puzzles and they had to take a tag and put it to the side. Um, and like, oh yeah, we got it down. And the whole team, yeah, we got it down. And they continued on the puzzles and they wanted to make sure they were faster than the other five. Because you could see what level they were. And if you're the lowest level, of course you're the best. So in this way, we used really fast prototyping and fast iterating to create and design um, our whole escape room, create interesting puzzles, um, and 
we learned that we have to do more externally feedback and make sure we don't fall in love and get blindsided by our own ideas. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Jan Willem. Um, so we have even one extra minute for questions. Does uh, anybody have a question already? 